In today's video, I wanna show you guys the three most common problems we see with the Hemisphere S631 and how to fix them. So we'll show you how to fix when you have an autonomous or DGPS solution, what initialize IMU means, and what is happening when you have a big elevation bus. So let's get right into the video here and show you how to fix all of these problems. The first problem we get is probably one of the most common ones, especially with new users, and that's when they're seeing the autonomous or DGPS solution. So in Field Genius here, you can see in the bottom right of my screen, it says Auton. So what that's telling you is it's autonomous and it's not receiving corrections from my base. And there's a couple of reasons that this could be happening. Uh, the first one to always check is to make sure that you've got your UHF antennas screwed onto the receiver. Nobody likes to admit that they've done this. It's the easiest fix, but make sure you've got your antennas attached to the back of the receiver because if you don't have them, you won't be able to get any range and the radios won't work as well as they should. Now, if you've got your antennas attached, the next thing to take a look at is to see if your radio light is flashing. So what you can see on screen right now is said radio light. And if it's solid, that means you're either not sending corrections from the base. So in my case, my base is sending corrections, but my Rover, since it's not flashing, is not receiving any radio corrections. And there's a couple of different things here that we need to check to see why this is happening so that we can fix it. So the first one is I'm gonna go into my instrument settings here and I'm gonna check out my radio settings. So I made some notes of what my radio settings were for my base and I wanna make sure that they match perfectly for my rover here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on stop receiving on my corrections here. And now I'm going to go into my corrections menu here. And you can see my communication UHF radio module. That's exactly what I wanna see if I'm using the UHF radio module. I'm gonna click the three dots here because I need to double check my settings here. Okay, and inside of my radio settings here, there are a couple of things that I wanna check. The first one is to make sure my protocol matches. So the protocol is almost the language that the radio is speaking. So if it doesn't match between base and rover, they can't understand one another. The next thing I wanna make sure is my enable FEC or my forward error correction. This is a tag that goes on the radio message to let the receiver know if it's been reflected or if it's arriving late. With this FEC tag enabled, it will do. In practice, we don't see a ton of performance difference between the two, so we typically tell people to leave it off as you'll get a tiny bit more range out of your radios that way. The next one is your frequency in megahertz, which is also corresponds to your channel. So I know that my issue here is I have 455 set on my rover, but on my base I had it set to 460 megahertz. So all I gotta do is switch this to 460 megahertz it apply and what we should see here is that my radio light begins to flash once the radio is programmed and we can see that's exactly what happens here is now we have that and if you hear it on video the receiver just called out that it's fixed and I can also tell that it now has a fixed solution by the satellite light if that satellite light is solid we know that we're receiving good radio and we have a fixed solution and we're ready to start surveying and if I get back to my map screen here what you're gonna see is instead of it saying Auton or DGPS in the bottom right corner it will say RTK fixed and I'm now ready to store a position that is centimeter accurate. Problem number two is probably one of the more confusing indications that Field Genius gives you but it's one of the more common problems that we hear about on the phone and that's when it's saying initialize IMU. So what that means is that your tilt sensor is out of calibration and when that occurs you just got to do the simple calibration routine. So I've put up a video of my lovely colleague David here showing you guys how to do this calibration. As you can see it takes about 30 seconds to calibrate your tilt sensor. You kind of just move it around like you're hitting a hammer and you're ready to begin surveying. So it's really simple, but let's say it's giving you grief and you don't wanna take the time to calibrate it. You're in a really heavy environment and the calibration keeps popping in and out. All you gotta do is go again back into your instrument settings here and inside of that menu, all you've gotta do is where it says tilt correction, just click that disable option, hit done, and you're ready to start surveying like a conventional RTK receiver with no IMU enabled. And if you wanna turn it back on, all you gotta do is go into that instrument settings and click enable again. The final problem we get a lot of calls about has to do with the elevation reported by the GPS. And what people report is that they're seeing like a 60 foot bust or a 20 meter bust from what they're expecting. It can be above what they're expecting or below, but they're seeing this huge difference from what they have on their known point or their known survey data. And the reason for that is when you shoot a point with GPS, it is shooting a point on an ellipsoid, an ellipsoidal model of the earth. And that position has a latitude and a longitude as well as an elevation. Now, for those of you who have attended some sixth grade geography classes and some sixth grade math classes, you know that the earth isn't a perfect ellipsoid. In fact, it's kind of pretty misshapen. It's almost like the snowball. We've got these 
ridges and these deep valleys, and it has to do with the gravitational distortion of the Earth. As we have giant bodies of water and we have different densities in terrain, all of this affects the gravitational constant on the Earth. And we have to model this if we want to properly get our elevations. And to do that, we use something called a geoid file. Now, there's a bunch of different models of geoid files. There's stuff like CGG 2013 and HT2 in Canada. In the US, we have uh, options like geoid 12 and 18B. And we're also working on a new kind of conglomerated one between the US and Canada to use. Now, that geoid file will correct your elevation on screen. How do you actually fix for this? And how do you get a geoid file into Field Genius? And what I'm going to do is here from the main menu, all I got to do is go into my projects folder and I have to set my coordinate system, my vertical system correctly. So if I click on my info button here for this test project, what you're going to see is I have what my options are set to. So you can see my vertical system is set to an ellipsoid. Now in Field Genius Android, all I got to do is click on this catalog next to vertical system and it will open up the GOA catalog where I can download the corresponding file for my location. And you can download a couple to make sure that you use the one that's most accurate for your known survey data so that you're using the proper system in your survey. Now, let's say your file doesn't exist here. There are a lot of repositories that hold a bunch of geoid files that you can go pull from. So I'm going to link down in the description down below. Microsurvey has a great resource, World Geoid Catalog, where you can go download specific geoid files for your use. You can also check out NOAA. Uh, so that's the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. They have all the models on their website for the US. In Canada, you can get it from the Surveyor General website or just Google Canadian Geoid Files and they'll come up or you can download them directly from microsurveys website, put them in your data collector, and you're ready to go. Now, the nice thing with Field Genius Android is to reprocess your data. Let's say you do your whole survey in the wrong coordinate system. You've done it all as an ellipsoid, but you actually needed it in CGG 2013. The good news is to reprocess your data, all you got to do in Field Genius is, and you can see on screen, is just switch it from ellipsoid to CGG 2013, open your project, and it will be completely reprocessed and ready to go. So, with that, all that being said, those are the three most common issues we see. And I know we kind of, you know, flew through it in the video here, which is why I'm going to link to somewhere on screen here. My lovely editor will put it up for me is our website survey assistant, where I have all the guides on how to do this, including these three most common issues. I have a specific section designated to the most common issues we see and how to fix them. And it includes a write up, a how to guide, so a PDF that you can print off and put inside your case, as well as a video that you can watch to follow along with, whether you're in the field, at the office where you're trying to walk somebody else through on the phone. It's all going to be linked there. So again, that's survey-assistant.com. There'll be a link in the description and somewhere on screen here.